Hi and welcome to a short primer on basic power supply testing. Over the next few minutes we will show you how to do basic power supply testing utilizing a DC load source, a variable AC source, and a digital voltmeter. Look for the advanced testing video if you are interested in testing for thermal characteristics, noise, and testing of other power supply features. A word of caution is in order here. This can be dangerous and should not be attempted by anyone that does not possess basic electronic skills and safety knowledge. To start with we will need a little bench space and a few tools, patch cords, etc. In our setup we are using an electronic load but you can certainly use a resistor bank if that is what is available. We will use a variable AC source to enable low line testing but directly plugging into the mains will still yield results. Preparation Start by reviewing the spec sheet of the supply and test. Make sure you are not testing beyond the parameters of the power supply, at least not to begin with. If you are not using a universal AC or auto ranging AC power supply, you will have a jumper switch to select the AC input range. Make sure you are on the correct setting before you begin. Connect your power supply to the electronic load and AC source. Be careful to use wire of adequate gauge or your readings will not be accurate and you could produce a fire hazard. Now that we're all connected up, turn on your AC source and if you're using a variable model set it to the lower limit of the acceptable AC range per the specification. Note that the power supply starts and you can see the output voltage appear on the voltmeter. By varying the AC input from minimum to maximum input range while monitoring the input will establish your line regulation. Now turn on your load. If using an electronic load like ours, bring the load up slowly to avoid accidentally going into overcurrent, but bring it up to full load. Low line AC and max DC load is the worst case scenario for a power supply, so if it meets these specifications under these conditions, it will be likely to meet your real world application. Now that you have the unit fully loaded, record the output voltage at the power supply. The difference between the starting voltage and the fully loaded voltage establishes the load regulation of the power supply. Now increase your load beyond the rated output currents. If your power supply is operating correctly, this will not damage it. As the current draw is turned up, eventually the output will turn off by either tapering off the voltage known as straight current limit, tapering off the voltage and current known as foldback current limit, or the output power will cycle on and off. This is known as hiccup current limit. Similar to hiccup current limit is latching current limit. Units with the latching feature require you to turn the AC on and off once to restart the supply. You can see that the output current pulses on and off when it is overloaded. This supply is equipped with hiccup current limit. You may have noticed that there is no replaceable fuse on the power supply. Fuses are no longer a current limit protection for modern power supplies. Fuses are now only used for what is called catastrophic failure. If you have a unit with a blown fuse, it means the power supply was damaged or is defective. I recommend returning it to the manufacturer for repair or replacement. If you have a supply like this one that is a thermally controlled fan, you should let the power supply sit for several minutes to heat up and verify fan operation. If you're using a resistor bank during this time, be careful not to overheat your resistor bank. Well, there you have it, a basic testing routine for AC to DC switching power supplies. Soon we hope to make another video that will show you how to verify the output noise with an O-scope, thermal characteristics, and other features such as remote sense, remote able, etc. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call anytime. We can be reached at 877-632-6935, and we're always happy to hear from you. Thank you again for your time.